Alright, what is up everyone? W Drums here. We're back finally doing the last elemental overall path guide review. This time we're doing it for the Earth Element. And I gotta say, out of all of them, this one might be the best. I'm not 100% sure, do not quote me on that, but this is gonna be a great and positive review. This is an incredible group we've got right here of new individuals. So without further ado, I bring to you the Earth Element. Alright, so first off in the guidebook, we, it uh, has Doomstone. So we got the brand new last Earth Swapper to my collection, Doomstone. It goes like this. Uh, yeah. Alright, so let's see. So first off, for his top half, which is Doom, we've got the Column Clubber path, which allows his uh, Column Clubber is what they call it to get larger and it builds up more and more levels and it turns into like a Greek like pillar like in Hercules actually and he smashes it down and then it breaks into tiny little pieces which is really awesome or you can do the jaded fighter path which has to deal with turning enemies into uh, jade which is I guess some kind of alloy or some kind of a uh, gem or something I, I'm sorry I don't really know and then you get to do more, uh, uh, what is it? It says, it says hold the shield to block attacks and do even more uh, damage to the uh, block attacker. And so, um, for top wise, I'm going to say Column Clubber because if you're going for story mode, Jaded Fighter is a great, great path for that because it focuses solely on turning enemies into Jade, which is cool, you know, or freeze them. That's awesome for that. And then Column Clubber, I just feel so much for a versatile. Because not only do you have to, I mean, do you, you don't have to wait for it to get to like, I think it's like five la layers of stone, I think, when you smash it. But, um, yeah, really you can just, uh, well, let me see here. Yeah, you can like break it apart in like three, four, five, you don't have to go the full thing. And it still has that explosion thing at the end, which is really cool. It shoots all the pillars outward, so it does a nice overall area damage as well on top of a single target great range too and the best thing is that you can charge this while getting hit i have a pvp video of me versus granite crusher and i was getting smashed by his hammer and he still held his sword attack down and went like that and nothing didn't phase him that is op my friends overpowered um and in the bottom we've got the serious spinner path which is allows you to charge the spin you can basically bounce between enemies better and then it increases the damage as well, so you're like a bouncing pinball back and forth. And a very useful path for uh, story mode because it's all about the enemies once again. But then you come over to the carved belt path, which now when you shoot your belt ring out, you also get this little spinning projectile rather that shoots out every time you conjure up the belt. And then it says you press the attack to spin and shoot the powerful enemies that do increase damage. So yeah. Bottom path, I'd say carved bell path is a must, but serious spinner is great for story mode. Depends on what your mode is. I always go for PvP more so, so I'd aim towards the carved bell path. Also, my buds uh, Skylander Boy and Girl and Malice Doll helped give me recommendations with this, so shout out goes to you guys. And um, yeah, so now overall figure review. Doomstone is a must buy, really. His top burst off is insane because you hold the shield down, you take zero damage, absolutely nothing. Unless they somehow have an ability that can go around the shield and hit you in your back where your Achilles heel kind of is, so to speak, it really um, will make you impenetrable to all the enemies, which is so unique. And then to top that off, I did a video of the Path Guy where it shows the enemy shooting bullets out, and you can block the bullet first off. Just like uh, Star Strike and just like Chill, block the bullet, shoots it back, turns him into Jade, which is so freaking cool. And the top, like I said, you can keep charging it, and you don't even if you get hit. It's so overpowered. And then the bottom half is fun. It's a lot of fun for story mode because of the way he bounces like a pinball through the enemies. It's very unique, very different from what I pictured. But um. Not a big fan of the bottom as much, but the top is cool. We're going to be great for any swap combo easily. So, um, definitely a must buy is the verdict for him easily. Definitely everyone must have him in his, your collection. He's great. So, let's go on to the next one. 
Oh, nice. So now we've got the other swapper of the Earth element, Rubble Rouser. Brace for impact. There he is. I don't think I said... Yeah, I don't even think I said Doomstone's catchphrase, whatever. Um, so my boy Rubble Rouser here. Really, really loving this dude, man. He is one of the best Earth guys I have ever played, hands down. His top and bottom are spectacular. So, top paths, we've got either Drill Pitcher Path, which you basically hold the A down, you go swing, swing, and you hold it, and it shoots the hammer. Decent damage, great accuracy, and uh, uh, speed and distance. Then you've got the uh, Excavate, what is that? Excavator. Yes, escape, uh, escape, uh, excavator, I'm gonna call it. I'm sorry, my pronunciation is atrocious. You can do better, I probably assure you. Um, but this one, you hold the drill down in the ground, and then it shoots out all these earth uh, power rocks out of the ground. And very cool because it shoots a lot of them out, but because we have jump now, I think it's incredibly useless in PvP, because if you're smart, you just hop over it all. If you were in the first or second Skylander game, It'd be OP'd as anything because you couldn't move around much, you couldn't jump. You'd have to walk really fast or really slow whatever your character is and you'd get hit. But I love the drill pitcher path for the top, that's that's my go-to one. And then the bottom, dude, this guy is so cool with his bottom. His bottom will be amazing for any combo, any combo. From Fire uh, Rouser is one of my favorites at the moment, such an OP combo, or Boom Rouser. Um, but so, then we've got, for the bottom path, we've got Boulder, Boulder's Path. This allows you to hold the drill, and then boulders are shooting out of the ground that are aimed towards enemies to damage it as you're underground. And then they just do increased damage as well. That is useful for story mode because it focuses all on the enemies. But then you've got my favorite, Minor Foreman Path. So when you go underground, you conjure up these Minor Foremans. I originally, I, th I think you could only do, was it, two, I believe? I think you can only summon two without the upgrade. So this one, you can summon up to four, and they're, they can keep coming back. So you can have four maximum in the field, but then let's say you, the one guy's losing, he's gonna die soon, you just go underground, shoot back out, there's another one there for you. And they're so annoying for PvP. My friend Ben and I showed it on a, a video, and dude, He's so good. Like, it's so unfair. You've got four little minions bashing the heck out of you like this, while on top of it, you've got whatever top you've got attacking you as well. And so, Minor Foreman, easily the best path for the bottom. And Rubble Rouser overall review... Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, um, his Soul Gem, that's right. I think I forgot Doomstone's Soul Gem. I, my apologies. Crap. Um... Yeah, his soul gem is where you get the, uh, for Doomstone, you get to hold the attack down, you shoot all the snakes out that now attack, uh, anything. Like, you just hold the shield down and they do so much damage as they're just coming out consistently. I'm sorry I forgot this, I really am, I just realized this. And then, his bottom half, he gets, during the fourth spin, he goes one, two, three, four. The fourth one's huge. And it shoots this huge area range of uh, like this green like laser stuff that damages all enemies. Really useful. Sorry, I'll go back to Rubble Rouser. I'm sorry, my head is like, whew. Um, but only human. Uh, so Rubble Rouser, his top, he gets this awesome soul gem called the Obsidian Skin. His skin becomes harder and he takes less damage. Kind of like Rattleshade kind of vibe. And then. The bottom soul gem, you hold the drill attack down, release, and it tosses the boulder into the sky. That is so good, because not only are you immortal underground, yes, you are immortal underground, so two earth guys that are immortal, technically, it's ridiculous, but then a huge boulder will throw up in the air, and it'll hit the enemy close to that uh, drill area. It can't hit them like all the way over here, but it can hit in a decent range. And Dude, he's, they're just so good. Both of the swappers for Earth are must-buys. Rubble Rouser is no exception. Very cool design. I didn't know what I was going to think about him, honestly. I was kind of skeptical, but man, oh man, do I love this dude. He's so fun. He might be in my top Skylanders, actually, right now. But, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'll come up with a video with it soon enough. i got to do some serious homework first to figure out what I want to say. So next up, 
we've got the regular Skylanders. So we've got the new Light Core Flashwing, blinded by the light. There she is. All right, so paths-wise, you've got the Super Shards path, which allows you to have crystals sticking to the walls, and then you shoot, they shoot their own, like, baby crystals all over the place. And then you can have up to three in the wall. And then they can also heal Flashman, which is kind of unique. And then you've got the Super Spinner Path, which does the, uh, just increases the spinner. You get better armor, deflects the enemy's shots, and what have you. And then she also gets to shoot a beam of light out. But now, I don't know really where I want to save her path was for her, because I, I realize the Soul Gem does less damage now. Like, it's, um, it's weaker sucks like her soul gem is like that lighthouse that light uh lighthouse crystal ability and it's it's a bummer because they, they weakened it they nerfed it just like prison break which i'll share in a bit so paths wise i love the super spinner path personally still but her shards i noticed do a lot more damage now so super shards might be the better one let me know in the comments below actually what you think of that one i'm gonna say spinner for now but i'm certainly open to other opportunities there so overall review for the new Lightcore Flashwing, not really a must-buy, beautiful figurine when you put her on there, but you don't really need her, honestly. The first one is just as good, there's no special wow power you get with her, it, it's all the same thing. Just a really beautiful looking figurine, so if you want to go for more looks aesthetic-wise, definitely get her. So a fun one to have, but you don't really need her, honestly. Next up, we've got Hyper Beam Prison Break Series 3. The Beam is Supreme! There he is. Alright, so first off, as all you know, Prison Break's been one of my favorites for a long time. Honestly though, this time, I'm kinda bummed. I, I think um, the Wow Pal is really cool and stuff, but I don't think it compares to the Series 2 one, honestly. Yet alone the figurine design from Series 2, but regardless. So we got the Pass, Crystal Ear which you get the crystal backpack, crystal attacks do more damage, and then you can shoot up to three packs of crystal shards at once, which is incredibly useful. And then you've got the Prismancer path, which allows his beam to turn gold, and basically does a lot more damage. And uh, the beam also can split into three paths when reflected through a crystal. So that's useful as well, but I still honestly love the Crystal Ear Path. You get the extra Crystal Backpack, which gives you incredible defense. And then you get to summon up three Crystal um, Shards from the I mean, from the sky. It's so useful. And then his Eruption Attack gets stronger. His Crystal Eruption thing, where he shoots them out like this. Oh, dude, it gets so much uh, better. And then his Soul Gem, though... ...is very useful for Story Mode, because it turns enemies into Crystals that are defeated. But, um, it's kind of useless for PvP. But overall, the Series 3, though, like, I just love the Wild Power for Series 2. I had a battle dueling them out to see which was better, and I find the second one is still my favorite, because just the use of that Wild Power is just, you shoot the laser, and then you click a button, and you get that extra orange beam coming out of there. It's just so much more useful than having all these just random crystal prison breaks spinning around. It's very whimsical at that, but... I think it's just not as cool as the Series 2 one, or yet alone as effective. Well, that's my thoughts, let me know in the comments what you think of that one. But overall, I'd say 3 is not a must-buy. Definitely not. I'd say 2, keep your 2. He's great. But 3, I don't know. I'm kind of bummed out about this one. He's like one of my favorites, so it kills me to say that. Alright, so... Oh, ho, ho. we got Scorp, King of the Sting. There he is. Dude, this guy is awesome. Okay. So you got the Stinger Path, which allows him to strike a poisonous trail into the ground from his tail. It creates a large shock wave. The poison gets increased, and then also, when you strike enemies with the poisonous tail, including PvP, it poisons them, dude. That's so essential. And then you've got the Crystal Venom Dancer uh, Path. Which you get to pull, um, throw out the more powerful Venom Balls. The Crystal attacks do more damage. And when the ball explodes, it splits into two smaller ones. That, I think, is better towards more towards um, Story Mode. Because it focuses more on the enemies. Because the enemies can get it attached on. And it'll be way more effective. 
Stinger Path is one of my favorites for him, man. It's so cool. I did not understand where they were going to take Scorp at all. And to top it off, he's got this amazing soul gem that you can just hold around permanently and just roll around. So not only does he have some insane speed, you get out of that ball real quick, you do the sting attack, poison them, keep rolling around. He's so overpowered, it's not even funny. But overall review for Scorp, dude, a must buy. Not only is the figurine completely gorgeous, you've got the little crystal venom ball in there. The detail's amazing. They really captured what a scorpion should look like. And I love how they got like the poison all over his claws and stuff. It's very unique. Very unique. And just beautiful, man. Beautiful figurine. Great gameplay. Definitely mine. Alright, then we got the new bash, pretty much. We've got Slobber Tooth. Clobber and Slobber. Yeah. Alright, so... We've got the Food Fighter Path, which allows him to suck up enemies, he can eat them and then get food, oh, I'm sorry, get health from it. And then also, when he spits them out, like he eats an enemy, spits it out, and they get covered in like this goo that does damage over time. But then he also gets this cool attack called Feast, where he can suck up the enemies and go, and like bring them in. And it's really useful for story mode. Really great for story mode. But then you've got this seismic tail path, which is so awesome. So his tail slam is incredibly stronger now. You get to knock back enemies into the air by holding your tail down. And then finally you get the earth shaker ability. You hold your attack down to continuously slam your tail like this over and over, sending huge shock waves coursing through the ground. And not to top that off, someone graciously showed me a video um, that you can continuously use this over and over, and it's true. But if you get hit, you lose it. But you can keep it going and going, which is very useful. And then his soul gem, I love. He gets that iron jaw, which allows his head damage attacks to do way more. And it makes his ramming ability so much more powerful. Overall review, now that I know more about the Seismic Tail Path, I'm more informed, I'd say definitely a must buy, honestly. I, I, he's so unique, the color on the figurine is beautiful, I love the design, he's fun, he's uh, exciting, he's powerful man, I think he puts Bass to shame as I sh will show in a PvP video, I don't know if it's up now, but I will, I'll put it up, and yeah man, he, he kicked Bash's butt honestly, I think they dumbed Bash down from what I saw, but I'll talk about him in a little bit, so, Slobber Tooth, a must buy. Alright, then we've got Series 3 Knockout Terrafin. It's feeding time! In the old west. <laughs> Alright, so, this one is an old fella since uh, the first game of Skylanders. And, so we've got either the Sandhawk Pack, which allows his speed to increase while burrowing. He gets mini sharks to come out at the enemies, and also his dorsal fin now can damage enemies. It's really cool and stuff. But then you've got the Brawler Path, which allows him to get combos. Usually the combos are always the best. Then you also get to do more damage with your knuckles. And then finally, you launch mini sharks that attack you. Like so, I'm sorry, um, that attack the enemy that attacks you. It's really cool. So let's say, ow, I get hit. Then all these sharks that like, come after you, and it's so cool. But then, uh, paths wise, I think Sandhog is more towards story mode. You can argue that to with me, whatever. I've tra I've like trained my Terrapins for a long time, and it's just really hard to control with how fast it is. But also now that you can jump and stuff, it's like your dorsal fin is not going to do as much damage to, to me now because I can kind of avoid it. You know what I mean? But then the Brawler Path I feel goes more hand in hand with his new Wow Pal which is the ability to get these golden gloves that he has on the figure now. And he like kind of scoops into the ground. So what he does is he's in the ground. And as he's in the ground and jumping outwards with these huge claws, he's shooting all of these baby mini sharks out. And I kind of compared them and I definitely believe the Series 3 is better than the Series 2. Because Series 2 is wow pal. He jumps, does the body slam, and then he can go back in the ground, which is cool and all. But this one I feel so much more ideal because of how many mini sharks you have at your arsenal. And you continuously dive in the ground. It's not like it, it ends and you just go back in again. And he's fast, man. It's like you don't even need Sandhawk because now he's just jumping around and stuff. Because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of Sandhawk. Because 
sand hog, you're gonna be buried in the ground the whole time. But this one, now you can afford to be up on land or in the ground, and because you're clawing people and then going right back under, clawing people and going back under. So definitely, I'd say surprisingly, Series Three Terrafin Knockout Terrafin, I think is a is a not a must buy, but definitely he's a good buy. Um, I like him. I still kind of miss the old Terrafin. That's kind of what I grew up on. But regardless, I do think the Series 3 one is not a bad deal. And if I'm correct, you get him with Bumble Blast, who's one of my favorite life elements. That's a great deal right there. So, there you have it. Alright, so that's all I have for the guidebook. This is why we now have the internet. So, let's do Bash Series 2. Alright, so for Bash, let's see what we got here. We've got two paths. We got the Pulver Dragon, which allows him to get his roll uh, more stronger. He's got uh, better speed with it, it does more damage, and most importantly, it becomes humongous. But I think this is great for story mode because then you've got the legendary path that everyone should know the Granite Dragon path. So not only does my Tail Swipe do more damage, it, um,. Also allows my stone fist to do more damage. And then let's see, hold on a second. Sorry, it's a huge fly that I've been trying to kill for a while, so... Thank goodness that happened, right? Thank the Lord. Alright. <laughs> Back to what we were saying. Um, yeah, the boulder becomes faster. I think... Oh, I'm sorry. No, we were with Brandon Dragon. My apologies. So then, you also get this attack called the Gaia Hammer. So what happens is you charge his tail up for a long period of time, and he does this huge swing of damage that does like a couple hundred damage. And... But that's what's a shameful thing, is like, I feel like they dumbed his damage down, because I did Bash versus Slobbertooth for a PvP match, and I'm very disappointed, honestly, because Slobbertooth crushed him, honestly. And Bash, I feel they like really dumbed down his power, because he was too overpowered. So, but his Wow Pal is still pretty useful, um, where he rolls around, shoots the thing up in the air, and then he crashes down, keeps going. It's cool and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just so bummed out about this one. He was great for Skylanders one and two, but I feel three they really just nerfed him. Is the I think the term where they, he just he's not as good as he used to be because he must have been too powerful. So I don't know. Keep your series two definitely because you know they'll probably make a three. Honestly, they probably will. Um, but yeah, I just I miss some. From 1 and 2, he was amazing, but Swap Force, they really kind of made him crappy now. That's my personal opinion, though. But then, we've got my boy, Dino Rang, the Australian Gator with the Boomerangs. Ha! So, we've got a couple cool ones. So, we've got the Earth Avenger Path, which you can now summon up to four Stone Fist attacks at once. You can then get stronger armor, and finally, enemies defeated by that, they uh, these uh, stone things come out of the ground now every time. Uh, but that's kind of useless for PvP, as always. I've loved this guy for a long time since the first game. If any of you remember that stuff, and uh, yeah, I just think this path is for story mode easily because then you've got the Grand Boomerang Master which I love. Boomerangs do more damage, they bounce off of walls and enemies, and finally you get the boomerang shield that lasts longer and does extra damage, man. He's amazing. And then the soul gem, he can pick up food, money, what have you, and he's got serious speed with those boomerangs, but the boomerang shield shoots three around him. I love that, dude. I think it's three. I think it's three. I can't remember. Um. But yeah, I've always recommended him. Dinorang is a must-buy. Not only is the design incredibly unique, I wish they made him into a series too, because the figurines kind of 
bland as opposed to what they could do now, man. The damage they could do now with the new designs they have, that 3D molding machine Activision has now. Oh my god. But, yeah, definitely get him if you haven't owned him before or experienced the wonders of Dino Ring. Incredible. And I believe the last one we are at is the Rock Titan Crusher. So, we've got the Rock Grinder Path, which allows him to do different combos. His hammer takes the form of his father's face, kind of creepy, but yes, it does. And then if you hold X when he throws the hammer down, he gets three trails of, like, buzz saws in the ground, which is kind of different. So, that one, uh, I don't know, I don't like that one as much anymore, because I did a PvP match with my buddy Ben, did Doomstone vs. Granite Crusher, and I believe the Rubble Master is the better one now because of these reasonings. So the Rubble Master is all about making the uh, rock slide, you know, doing the avalanche attack thing. And then he also gets this brand new armor and stuff which looks really nifty on him. But what my friend Ben discovered is that when Doomstone's shield was being held up, um, what happened was some of the rocks actually hurt uh, Doomstone. Like when he was in that boulder attack, so it was kind of useful now, and I feel like they gave it better damage, and also you don't take as much damage when someone hits the rocks when you're rolling around, which was really important, because that was a big flaw in Giants, in my opinion. Big flaw. But, um, now though, I, I like I like Rubble Master more now, ironically. So now I believe Crusher is definitely a must-buy now, ironically, because he wasn't one of my favorite Giants in the past, but I feel he definitely stepped it up. And, yeah, so, and then what the heck's his soul gem again, I'm trying to remember. I believe it's the, uh, that's right, soul gem, you disperse into the rock boulders, and now you can actually steer where they go, which is incredibly useful for Rubble Master, right? Yeah, Rubble Master, because it's all about the avalanche, uh, boulder attack, you know, so it's like hand in hand, perfect. So, overall though, guys, um, Guys and gals, uh, the Earth guys are just all really great overall. There's only a couple that I didn't like. Series 3, Prison Break, Flashwing, I feel her damage did get up a little bit, but the Lighthouse kind of sucks now. Terrapin's doing pretty good. I like his new WoW Pal, so I'd say get him. Uh, Bash, they dumbed him down. But overall, Earth did really good this year. Like, very surprised. And... Um, amazing purchases overall, like, really, I, I honestly recommend getting almost all of these ones, and I'm not biased, it's really, they really are fun, like, I, you know my reviews, I don't sugarcoat things, regardless of my, uh, friendship with Activision now, it's like, um, they're, they're really good, they're very unique designs, the swappers are my favorite this time around, they're, they're just unreal, honestly, I think I might do a match now where I swap them and have them verse each other, what do you think of that, let me know in the comments. So, as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and have a great day, and peace!